Hi guys, it's John here. It is Sunday, October 10th, 2021. I want to expand a little bit on a uh, episode I produced last night on uh, how collective consciousness is emerging now. I, at the time when I recorded that, I was a bit pressed for time and I hadn't uh, recorded anything for a while, so I was a bit uh, flustered and nervous. And then I listened to it again today and responded to some comments on it and I thought, well, you know, that I, and that I can basically describe that a bit more clearly. Here's why it's challenging. Let me give you an example. If I was in 3D reality, and say you were in 4D or 5D reality, and you tried to explain what, to me, in 3D reality, what 4 or 5D reality was like, it would be extremely difficult for you to do that because words would fail to describe the totality of that experience of being in 3D of, of being in 4D or 5D because it involves a lot of sensations and perceptions which are not available to me as someone who's living in 3D so all that you would be able to do is give me a sense or paint a very broad picture of it but lacking in the perceptual and experiential aspects of it and so the kind of communication that I'm trying to describe that will occur in 4D or 5D reality. And I'm not 100% sure of what the differences are because I see people use those two terms. And at least from my perspective, the distinctions are, are a little unclear. That's why I'm using both of them because I'm not sure which one is actually accurate. Uh, 4D suggests another dimension to reality. 5D suggests at least two more, if not some exponential uh, amount more of dimensions uh, set that aside for now I, I do this is why I do I I do feel that we need to sort of standardize definitions so that when I say something you know what I mean precisely without uh, a lot of discrepancy back to my point um, so what I'm suggesting is is that in 4d or 5d reality whatever we're, it is or whatever we're gonna call it uh, we will be communicating, and let me step back again. When I say telepathic communication, it, at least to me, it suggests that we are communicating back and forth with each other uh, without, exp without using our mouths to ex express words. So we're sending thoughts back and forth. I think that what I'm actually trying to describe is, 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 beyond, is more than that, because it'll be the kind of communication that I anticipate occurring in these extra dimensions will include uh, feelings, impressions, uh, emotions, perceptions, experiences, sensations, and uh, awareness. So we won't just be using words like we do now. We, we, we use words which are we have vocabulary and each word has a meaning and even then you know it's questionable as as my discussion right now demonstrates it's questionable whether the terminologies themselves are exactly the same like your definition of one of a word might be different than mine a little bit but when we're conveying when we're communicating experientially there will be no discrepancy like that because you will literally be sensing what i'm communicating to you and vice versa like I will just feel what it is that you want to convey and I will just have a knowing that is very broad and well-rounded and en encompasses everything from how it makes you feel to like literally you might be able to share an experience with me that I actually experience as if I experienced it myself this is like profoundly this is like orders of magnitude uh, more layers of information that will be conveyed experientially and furthermore you know of course we will be able to communicate with beings who are not incarnated or non-incarnate um, and we will also be able to communicate with beings who are in other parts of the universe because on the higher dimensions time and space do not have the same limitations or relevance that they do to us here now in this in this reality so um, it's very hard to sort of describe this unless you've experienced it now i had an experience of this just recently because i happened to have which is just 
I want to do a whole other episode on this, but I, I just, I'm going through this transit of Uranus opposite Neptune. Huh? <laughs> Which is like one of the coolest things ever. So, um, I had on the night that it was exact, I had this just profound experiential awareness of these things going on on different levels. And some of it involved other beings and other people. Um, that was, it was so fast and so intense that it's like I could, if I had stopped to try and write it all down, I would have to write a whole small, a, a fairly long essay just to describe what I experienced in a few minutes because it was full of uh, information and it was full, it was experiential because I felt what was happening at the same time. Um, very multidimensional. Um, and also the the information that was conveyed to me was like literally life-changing. So it shifted my perspective of my whole life and my whole being and my whole reality all within the span of a few minutes. So this is like very intense experience of like vast amounts of knowledge and information being conveyed at light speed. And that's the kind of experience I think that people are going to be having in the Aquarian age. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take for us to get to that point. But I think that some of us who are sort of at the cusp of this, who are open to this, who have done our shadow work and so forth, um, are going to be starting to experiencing things like this on a more regular and ongoing basis. So there is no analog for what I'm trying to describe in broad terms in human experience and reality to date. Now, if a number of people start... Uh, experiencing, you know, quote unquote reality in this way. Um, it has, like I said last night, astonishing implications because the amount of knowledge and information that can be conveyed and the speed with which it can be conveyed is mind boggling. So say a young person, human being is born in, in this future that I'm describing, they will be able to obtain and absorb vast amounts of knowledge and experience just by existing. So, you know, like right now, or we have historically, if you want to be, if you want to become an expert in something, let's say you might have to go to university for, you know, eight or 10 years, uh, uh, to get your PhD or something like that. Well, theoretically, uh, a person could simply tune into and tap into vast realms of knowledge and information um, that their brain on its own, separate as a separate thing, would take many, many years to acquire. Um, so, you know, there has been talk, like, for example, I'm just getting an image of crystals, which were probably used in Lemuria and Atlantis to store vast amounts of knowledge and information. But the human being is vastly more powerful than, um, you know, objects, uh, 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 because we are divine aspects of creation and we are very multidimensional, as I said before. And so I can foresee a future in which we will just be able to access and tap into vast amounts of, of knowledge, but it won't just be information. It'll be actual knowledge, uh, that's experiential. So we will have, uh, an experience and an understanding of whatever the topic is uh, that we're interested in or that we want to acquire uh, just by tuning into it if we have that ability. So, you know, there's this, uh, everyone's heard the phrase that we only use a tiny fraction of our brain and perhaps that's, this is the part of the brain that is going to be, uh, become in use finally. Um, but it's also multidimensional so that there's aspects of ourselves that are non-material and those aspects of ourselves will, will be much more uh, a part of our reality than they are presently. So those aspects of ourselves are not limited by time and space or incarnational experiences. Uh, you know, as we incarnate, we are emanations of our soul. We come to the earth and we inhabit this physical body and being, which is very separate from, or traditionally was for, thousands of years, for the most part, for most people, very separate and uh, individuated. And, uh, but as we open up to higher levels and aspects of ourselves, a lot of those limits of time and space 
and physical uh, three-dimensional reality just no simply no longer apply. So I see us living and experiencing and working on various uh, aspects of ourselves and uh, various dimensions simultaneously. And yet we will still have our physical being <laughs> with all of its you know, peculiar, peculiarities and proclivities and senses and so forth. And so um, this, I, what I'm trying to describe is multidimensional reality, uh, but more, more specifically multidimensional uh, communication abilities. So, um, for example, we may not even need physical infrastructure like what we have now, like the internet and uh, cell phones and things like that could theoretically become redundant because they will, they are not multidimensional objects, whereas we are. Uh, so, you know, I could see, theoretically go and sit with you energetically if you were in Tokyo and I was in New York and I could go and hang out with you and be with you and experience being with you and vice versa. Uh, without actually going anywhere physically. I mean, this, this has, like I said, really profound and astonishing uh, implications. And I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm still just scratching the surface of it here now. Uh, but let's say, for example, uh, another practical example, say you're a gardener um, and, you know, you want to know, well, where should I plant my carrots? Well, you tune into the earth and you tune into the carrot seeds uh, and the diva, which is the soul or spirit of that organism, and uh, you assess the situation and you make a determination. <laughs> and what kind of fertilizer do you need and how much watering do you need and so forth? We will be direct, directly collaborating with all of these other life forms uh, consciously. Uh, I know this, this, I have had personal experiences where I have uh, communicated with divas before. Um, they have an intelligence and an awareness but we're, that we just simply, for the most part, do not perceive. Absolutely, I have no question about that. So this would open up vast realms of, of uh, possibilities for how things could change radically and very quickly uh, just by having this awareness. Now, if some people are interested in this, they, they might want to, for example, read up about f the experience at Fintorn, which was a community based in Scotland where they did actually do this. They actually communicated with the divas of... Uh, the plant kingdom and uh, they had some like astonishing results and astonishing experiences uh, so all of this stuff is uh, theoretically possible what i'm saying though is that in the aquarian age these kinds of things are going to be taking place on as part of our reality and not as sort of outliers or peak spiritual experiences or something they will just literally be part of reality and that will make much of what has existed in civilization and in society uh, up until this point in history, particularly, you know, the last few thousand years, completely redundant. And it will also, I think, like I said, potentially make a lot of infrastructure redundant. Now, there may be, it's a continuum, so there may be some people who are more advanced or who are, have more advanced skills and abilities than others. Uh, and so we still may need physical infrastructure for them, uh, so who knows how far this will go? The only time will tell, and I, I probably won't be here in this physical form at that time. So I can only, this is, you know, there's some conjecture and speculation here, but this is kind of the future that I foresee. Now there's another extremely important and consequential aspect to this that I think is like really interesting, which is this, that in multidimensional communication, we there will be no ability to lie or deceive or mislead because the party that is being to which these any kind of lies or deception are being directed will just know that it's not true so there you know we will have this depth of perception that we will be able to see what is com who the person is that's communicating this information. And there will be part of us that will simply know that it, that's a fabrication or distortion of truth or reality. So think about that in the context of our current reality, where there are falsehoods and BS and misrepresentations and distortions and illusions being promulgated all the time to all kinds, to millions, hundreds of millions, if not billions of people. Well, that 
that will no longer be able to occur in that way unless the person doing it is extremely powerful and sophisticated uh, on energetic levels. But I would suspect that someone's uh, alarm bells will just be, their intuitive alarm bells would just go off in the presence of someone like that, and they will just know that that source is not to be trusted or even affiliated with or associated with. That alone has like profoundly significant implications. Also, broad and general distortions of truth, and a truth with a capital T, will not uh, be able to occur. So, for example, we, have, we live in a society now where there is huge uh, wealth and income disparity. Now, that, the energy of that will not resonate on the higher dimensions because it is a distortion of truth and justice. <laughs> So that will be out the window. And it will also be impossible for any kind of organization to uh, hide truth from people because people's depth of perception, like right now we have to follow a paper trail, so to speak, to get at the truth. So it's, it's very easy for people to hide facts and, tr and realities and truths from people. But people are going to have these intuitive and psychic abilities in the future that will um, that that will be able to penetrate uh, any kind of distortion of truth. So that also has like really profound uh, implications. Say you're a politician and you get up and you just you know in the past you know they could just get up and tell people what they wanted to hear and BS people. Well, everyone's going to know that this person is a liar, or that. Uh, their motives are not uh, sincere or genuine or uh, that their motives, uh, uh, that they're not actually motivated to, to do the best, what's in the best interest of everybody, but f only for themselves. So we will know that somebody is being sociopathic or narcissistic or psychopathic um, just by tuning into them. So all that's out the window too. So, you know, it will be very hard, if not impossible, for uh, uh for lies and deception to occur in this new reality because of the depth of our perception. And that has extremely profound uh, implications for society. You know, who is going to put up with uh, uh, kleptocrats, for example? Uh, you know, narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, and so on. The, you know, we will see them uh, coming uh, from like a thousand miles away. The important thing in all of this is just generally that in these higher dimensions, time and space are no longer obstacles. And that is probably the hardest part for us at this point in time to wrap our heads around. But that is basically uh, where we are headed. Uh, and, you know, we have always been multidimensional beings. We, uh, strong uh, body chills here. We've always been multidimensional beings. We just forgot it. Or, you know, it, that awareness was um, suppressed. Um, and we are basically waking up to who we have always been in truth. Anyway, this is a, a, a stream of consciousness, but uh, I stopped for a minute and I was reflecting on what I've been saying and I just have feel this really high vibrational energy in me right now so i'm extremely excited about this because it's kind of like it's the dream that 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 as individual beings we have dreamed of this reality for for millennia probably for lifetimes to live in that state of consciousness and awareness which is much more closely aligned with our our true nature and our true beings and it's essentially like it feels like we are on the cusp of being liberated from this lack of awareness of who we are and what we are in truth. Um, and um, it's very powerful. So with that, I wish you a good day and uh, I hope this resonates with people. It's, it's extremely exciting to reflect on this and contemplate this and talk about it. So thanks for all your uh, support and shares and comments and subscriptions and so forth. And uh, I've got to thank uh, Denise from Spiritual Growth 
call Matt Taro uh, for uh, giving me a little uh, promotion today. Uh, she's wonderful, and I encourage everybody to check out her channel. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description. She's a her readings are just brilliant. You, you've got to check it, check them out. She does readings on politics too, uh, but her she does weekly readings, uh, tarot readings for her followers, and they're just like ridiculously spot on for me at least. Thanks for all your support in the form of likes, shares, comments. I really like your comments, and uh, to all my new subscribers. And have a good day. I will talk to you soon. Bye.